Hello, this is Maria from Four Season Foraging. And today I want to talk to you about evergreen tips, specifically focusing on spruce tips. But before we get into the details of all that, just wanted to say thank you for watching. If you like it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. It helps me out a lot. And if you happen to have a few extra dollars a month, you can help me out on Patreon. The link is down below in the description box. And on there, you can pledge a small monthly dollar amount to help me keep producing these free informative videos for you all. So thanks a lot. So let's just start with a basic introduction. What are evergreen tips? So most simply put, evergreen tips are the fresh green growth of evergreens in early spring. So on here, you can see these light green colored tips. Those are the tips, right? <laughs> it's as simple as that. So the growth that's further up the stem is from earlier years. So the closest being from last year's growth. So this here represents one year of growth for the spruce tree. Now what you're specifically looking for is the cone bearing evergreens with the needle like leaves. Since there are some evergreens that have broad leaves, so leaves that look more like you know, oaks or maples or something like that. But specifically we want the needle like leaves of the cone bearing trees. And to make things just a little more complicated, there is also cone bearing trees with needle like branches that are deciduous. So like tamarack, for example, is a deciduous needle leaved tree. But you really don't have to worry too much about those details because you'll probably recognize the correct thing to eat when you see it. I do want to start off by cautioning you, however, about a toxic evergreen and that is yew. So yew is native to North America. There's also species that grow elsewhere in the world like East Asia and Europe. So this is definitely a tree that you want to be familiar with and make sure that you're not eating any part of it except the flesh of the fruit is technically edible <laughs> but the seed in the fruit is the most poisonous part of the plant so you got to be careful if you want to try to eat it do some research be careful about it but you never ever eat the tips of you or any part that's not the flesh of the berry well it's not technically a berry but it looks like a berry so i'm going to tell you about you and show you a uh, yew bush just so you have a better idea of what you're trying to avoid. This plant next to me here is a yew and it is a native species to North America but of course in the wild you're not going to find it growing in a box shape like this. Um, depending on where exactly you live and the species of yew that you have it might be more of a tree or it might be more of a sprawling shrub but you will often see it growing like this in landscapes where it's commonly planted. So I wanted to point this out because you do come across it a lot in yards and in front of businesses and the parks sometimes too. So I wanted to make sure that you know about this plant because it is a poisonous lookalike to other edible evergreens. So how do I know this is you? Well, First of all, the needles are very flat, more like two-sided almost, and the tips are pointy and sharp. And if you look at the way the needles grow off of the stem, it's almost like they're growing in two lateral lines. So whereas spruce has needles that grow all along the stem, like in a spiral, so it's kind of like a bottle brush type of look. This is more like just two even planes 
coming out from either side of the stem. And they're not out right now, but they do produce red fruit. It looks like a little red berry. They're maybe about a quarter inch across. And those are very distinctive because there's no other evergreen, at least around here, that makes red fruits like that. So I recommend starting with spruce tips, which this here is spruce. There are other types of evergreens that also produce edible young growth, for example, pines and firs. However, spruce tips are the more popular option and it's also pretty likely that you'll be able to find it in your landscape wherever you are, be it in the city or the country or somewhere in between. So then what are spruce trees? Well, this here is a spruce tree. Obviously you can't see the whole tree. This is just the dangly branches. Um, but spruce trees are native to North America and elsewhere in the world. Uh, but in North America, there's about 12 different species that grow here. And in my region, in Minnesota, there's four different species that you're most likely to find, which includes the native spruces as well as planted and ornamental ones. So this here is a Norway spruce, which as you can probably guess by the name is native to Europe. And I will talk a little bit about how to identify different spruce trees, but I'm not gonna get too deep into it. Um, but let's just start with the basics of spruces. So spruce trees have sharp pointed needles. So the tips are not sharp because they're new growth, they're soft. They don't have that waxy coating quite as much yet. But if you touch these older tips, they are prickly to the touch. And another thing that helps to identify spruce is that the needles grow spirally around the twig. So it kind of looks like a bottle brush where all around 360 degrees around the twig, the needles are coming out. Whereas with some other species, they might only come out, you know, on two opposite sides ish, you know, <laughs> about. Another thing that helps you identify spruce is looking at the needle itself. So spruce needles are more or less rectangular. So if you put it between your fingers and try to roll it, it will roll really easily. Whereas if you try to do that with a flat needle, it will be difficult to roll or won't roll at all. And another thing you can do is just you know, pinch it apart, or if you have a little knife, cut it apart, and you can see that the cross section is square-ish. Another thing about spruce twigs is that if you look really closely at where the needles join the twig, you'll see that they're coming out of this little peg-like base. So where the green needle and the brown twig meet, there's this little brown part that sticks up and that is what the green needle is situated in. So that little peg-like base is characteristic of spruce trees. So another thing I should mention about spruce is that the needles grow singly from the stem. So if you're looking at pine trees, those needles always grow in bunches sometimes bunches of two, sometimes three, sometimes five, but they'll always be in a little bundle. And if you're looking at fir trees, those have flat needles, so they won't be as easy to roll between your fingers as these, and they won't look squarish in cross section, which you probably can't really tell here. And then also, Fur needles more or less grow in two horizontal planes coming off of the twig. So it won't be this bottle brush appearance where it grows all around. It'll look more like two lines of needles coming off. Also, 
birds have a dull tip or a notch tip, so they won't have the same pokey feeling as spruces do. So the cones will also help you identify what kind of tree you're looking at. Um, they might be hard to find sometimes just because they might be growing way up high on the tree where you can't really see them or it might be the wrong time of year to find them but oftentimes you'll find them kind of littered around the base of the tree like this one I picked up off the ground so even though it's not the time of year that the tree is has mature cones like this I can still find them around so it's definitely worth looking on the ground for so this here is the cone of this tree which again is a Norway spruce and Norway spruces have the biggest cones that you'll find at least around here in Minnesota so these are usually four to six inches long and they'll always be in this kind of hot dog like shape like long and narrow and the little scales are tan in color and they have like some fringing and they have a little notch at the bottom there. If you find something that looks kind of like this, the tree you're looking at is most likely a spruce. Spruce cones for different species look really similar. Usually they'll be smaller than this. Like I said, these have the biggest cones, but they'll be a similar shape and the scales will look really similar. Although, you know, some are different colors and some are, some don't have the fringing or the notching. Now, if you were to pick up a pine cone, those are generally more squat. So more of like a conical shape or kind of a pyramidal shape. So they're more like broader in proportion than spruce cones are. And fir cones actually grow upright on the tree. So if you are able to see the cones growing on the tree, if they're sitting upright like this, that'll be a fir cone. And if they're dangling down like that, that'll be a spruce cone. And fir cones do look pretty similar to spruce cones. So being able to tell which way it's pointed on the tree will help. So when you are looking for your spruce tips to harvest and eat, I definitely recommend taste testing them as you're out in the field, just giving them little samples, just to make sure that they taste good to you. Um, there definitely is variance in flavor between the species and just, you know, depending on local climactic conditions and things like that. But in general, I would say that white spruce has the best flavor, at least of the ones that I tried, which is the tree growing next to me here. Now I can tell this is white spruce because the cones are relatively small. They're maybe two or three inches long and the margins of the scales on the cone are completely smooth. And also you can probably tell, but they're just growing everywhere on this tree right now. And on both Norway spruce and blue spruce, they tend to cluster more at the top. Also, if you look at the general shape of white spruce, like the outline of the whole tree. It's more of a strongly pyramidal, like pointed shape. Whereas with Norway spruce, as it matures, the branches get really like droopy and pendulous. Like they'll just be these long, smaller branches will be coming off of the main branches. So that's another way to tell them apart too. So I've already mentioned blue spruce, Norway spruce, and white spruce. The other spruce that grows in Minnesota is black spruce, which also tastes really, really good. And that one, you don't really ever see it planted ornamentally. It's more common in bogs and lowland wet areas, and it's smaller than white spruce. Like the needles will be smaller and the cones will be smaller and the overall height of it tends to be smaller too. And then the shape of it is pretty unique. Like it has this kind of little cone shape at the top and then like a little gap and then you get that like characteristic triangular spruce shape underneath that. Those can be really clear from a distance when you see that silhouette. 
So unfortunately, I waited a bit too long to make this video. Uh, spruce tip season is a pretty narrow window. They do get big and old kind of fast. So these ones here, like you can see that they still have this lighter color and touching them, they also just feel more tender. They're not as pokey or waxy as the growth from last year. But this is a little older than you ideally want it. When they first come out, they'll just be growing in this little, it almost looks like a little bud. And they'll just be like clumped together really tightly and have this like papery sheath covering them. So at this point, the needles are pretty well spread out and getting pretty old. So not quite where you want them right now. Just like maybe a week earlier would have been perfect. But over here, there are a couple that are younger. So I'm just gonna pull this one here and it did have a little bit of that papery sheath at the tip. And you can probably see that the tip is more gather together, it's more bunched together. So those are all good signs that they're still good to eat. And it won't hurt you or anything when it gets older, it'll just be more resinous and the flavor won't be as good. Really what you're looking for, it should be more of a like bright citrusy flavor and kind of something you would expect more out of like a tropical location than Minnesota. <laughs> but yeah, it should taste really good and just have like maybe a hint of resinous flavor or bitterness, but mostly be kind of lemony or like citrusy. So I'm just going to taste a little bit to start. <laughs> just to make sure I'm not setting myself up for failure here. Yeah, so this is pretty good. Um, it's definitely getting a little tough and the aftertaste was more like resinous than the initial flavor. Like what hits you initially is more of a sweet kind of citrusy flavor, but it is a bit more bitter in the aftertaste. So again, not ideal, but maybe something you could work with. So I wanted to talk about this tree here really quickly too, because this is a Doug fir, which despite the name, it's not a true fir, it's its own thing. And I have made Doug fir tip infused syrup before, and I thought it was really tasty. I think the flavor is really good. So I just wanted to point this out as another possible species. Now, Doug fir, is really easy to identify by its unusual cones. The cones have these like three pronged bracts that come off of the scales and they're super conspicuous. But if you don't have the cones, they are a bit fur-like in their appearance besides that they have flat needles with blunt tips. And if the cones aren't out, you can always, again, look at the ground to try to find a cone. And here's an example, the weirdy little bracts coming off of it. Again, these tips are probably a little past their prime, but I'll just sample it. Yeah, so I'm definitely getting that like lemony citrusy flavor which is super good fortunately and there's also this kind of background of bitterness which is not ideal so if you're wanting to get spruce tips or evergreen tips don't be like me don't procrastinate go out and get them when they're ready because the season will be over before you know it but if you do happen to get them in time which i hope you do it's something that's pretty easy to work with. So typically what people do is make infusions with them, like infusing them in maple syrup, for example, or in simple syrup, which is just a mixture of water and sugar dissolved together. And you can then use that to make cocktails or you know, pour it over yogurt or ice cream or really whatever you want to do with it it's great spruce tips are 
super tasty. Another option, if they're young enough and tender enough, you can just like chop them up finely and use them as a seasoning, like put them in salads or you could even go sweet with them, like include them in cookies or scones or other baked goods. And it'll give kind of a nice like citrusy, resiny flavor to it. When you get them <laughs> at the great time of year, they are super tasty and I promise you it'll just it'll blow your mind just knowing that it comes from a spruce tree because you would probably assume it's like a pineapple or something like that so i definitely recommend you give it a try that was my video about evergreen tips i hope that you learned a few things and that you enjoyed it and feel inspired to try spruce tips on your own if you did please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications it's a great way to help me out for free but if you happen to have a few extra dollars a month you can join me over on patreon the link is in the description box down below and on there you can pledge a small monthly dollar amount to help me keep producing these free informative videos for you all so if you could do that i would super appreciate it if not no worries either way happy foraging Thank you.